Hey you guys, it's Peter, and I'm back. Of course I'm back, I'm not going anywhere. Beast! <laughs> I'm YouTube! Famous now, available in 2020. I all of a sudden, I just had that moment, like I totally know now what it's like to be the rock star of the world and have that moment where you have the entire audience waiting for that one note. <laughs> I don't even know where I'm at with my intro. Anyway, I'm YouTube. <laughs> Famous now, available in 2020. The album, Dad, AF. <clears throat> Let's get wild. Let's get wild. Are you all ready to see J-Lo this weekend? Oh my God. Somebody the other day, they said, are you excited about the Super Bowl? And I said, uh, yeah, we're going to a Super Bowl party at our friend Melissa and Jason's and they always have the best treats. But anyway, I don't know, even know who's playing. This guy at the gas station last night. Well, one of my friends, so this is how Peter Mon ascertains word of the day, um, ascertains as to who is playing for the Super Bowl. You listen to clues, okay? So, a friend of mine is from Kansas City. So I was talking to him the other day and he said something about the Super Bowl and something big about Kansas City, okay? And then I was at the gas station last night and this guy said to me, the whole time I grew up in Frisco, I was always really embarrassed about being from Frisco because of football. And I'm assuming it's Kansas City and Frisco. It's, I don't even know, is it? Who is it? So let's see. Who is playing in, let me see if I'm anywhere near close, whatever <laughs> my guesses were. Okay, let's see who it is. It's the San Francisco 49ers and the Kansas City Chiefs! Oh my God, I figured it out just from the day of the world. By the way, if you do not want to believe my little predictions there that just I put things together, that's kind of how I got through high school and why I only graduated with 1.86, okay? Um, so it was my friend Tanner Kearns who is also a YouTuber. I will link Tanner's videos below. Um, Tanner is a little down on himself. He's like thinking about giving up the YouTube. I'm like, Tanner, no, you got to keep up the YouTubes. So go check out Tanner's channel. Go follow Tanner. He's an amazing guy. And um, yeah, he's from Kansas, so he's the one that gave me that hint. But anyway, okay, let's get into today. Can you imagine me at a Super Bowl party? Touchdown. <laughs> anyway, um, oh my God, the treats. I mean, the cheese balls. That's, listen, I'm there for the balls. All family friendly, okay? And those dances that the football players do. Woo, I get out of breath just watching them. Okay. Let's talk about a couple things. First of all, we're gonna talk about Nikocado Avocado in just a second. But I would like to talk about um, Kat Von D. So now I was looking on the Beauty Guru Chatter. This is kind of a little bit old, but I do wanna talk about it. So, okay, I was on the Beauty Guru Reddit Chatter. Over, I, hey, I love them over there so much. Uh, they know that I do too. I, I see in my threads every once in a while, they'll be like, or in the threads, they'll be like, oh, Peter Mon reads here, blah, 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 blah whatever. I do, I read every day. So anyway, <coughs> I had seen this article or this post come out. It was an article in Yahoo and they talked about it, about how Kat Von D was, I, I guess, blaming influencers um, for why she sold her part of the business or whatever. And I'm like, okay, what is all this about? Kat Von D, she truly cannot take any responsibility for anything in her entire life. When anything happens, she backtracks. It's always kind of constantly, you know, to try to save face. And you know what's really sad about Kat Von D? First of all, I, I, I will say this until I am blue in the face. These people need to hire PR people, okay? I mean, she had her own TV show at one point. These people need to hire people to try to help them how to word things or to say things or I don't know, whatever. But back in the day, like, Kat Von D was somebody that people loved her makeup. They loved her makeup brand, okay? And I think some people still do. Um, and they really liked Kat Von D. And I mean, she has literally fallen from grace in every aspect of it all, right? To the point where it's just like, at, she just seems like now like, I don't care. Like, I really don't care. Love me or hate me. And you know, the thing about that attitude is a lot of people might think that that's a really attractive attitude to just say like, hey, you know what? F you if you don't like me. And, and there is, I think, some 
I don't know, acceptance about the world, about what other people think about us is none of our business, right? But I think at some point when you say that, like that always comes across to me as very much fake confidence. It just comes across to me as, you know, whatever. Like if you ever met somebody and they're like, mm, mm, I hate that, okay? Don't put me in a room with that person for 10 minutes because I'll be like, let me out of here! This person is phony and fake. I cannot stand it, okay? When they're always like, mm, 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 all that, I can't be bothered with it at all, okay? So when you act like you don't care about what people are saying or, you know, it's, it's my time to just like, you know, bow out or whatever without really kind of saying how you really do feel about something, then what you've done is you've given up on yourself too. Don't ever give up on yourself. Like Janis Joplin said, never compromise yourself. You're all you've got, right? So when you're somebody like Kat Von D who like had this huge following and then all of a sudden you're just like, I'm out. <laughs> I mean, that says a lot, you know, and I think it's interesting. So for her then to come out and blame influencers does not surprise me because she takes very little credit or she takes very little ownership over the things that happens in her life. So anyway, I saw this post and the post said, I'm, I'm dealing with one really bad contact today, so just bear with me. Um, Yahoo posted an article titled, Kat Von D says influencers made her want to sell her beauty brand, Yahoo Lifestyle. Okay, and no, Yahoo Lifestyle. And then some, okay, so then I went to the article because I wanted to see what the article had to say. It's this very lengthy article, and they interview on here, blah, 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 and then they post like the Instagram post of her picture where she said she's selling it and all this kind of stuff. But if you go down here and you read the interview, she says, and now the interview is, it says, but there's more to it. According to the 37-year-old businesswoman's appearance on Hillary Kerr's Second Life podcast on Monday, um, so this was right after she, this was probably two weeks ago, um, Kat Von D, who they just refer to, refer to as Von D, <laughs> the Baroness Von Trapp, <laughs> I like to refer to her as, uh, born Catherine, the reason why is I just always think of her when I read it. Don't read into that. I know people that would be like, why, why, why? Okay. Tell me I love the Judds so much. Oh my God, what happened to Naomi and Winona Judd? I love them. Okay, is Naomi still around? Naomi, don't you know me? Oh my God, when my mom passed away, I went home and I watched Love Can Build a Bridge, <laughs> the true story of the Judds, and bawled my eyes out, okay? I related to that story so much. So anyway, Kat Von D, it just says Von D, born Catherine Von Trockenberg, hinted that she felt alienated by the beauty industry's focus on influencers and the pressure to look a certain way. It's been 11 years and I am proud of what we've done, but I think that the beauty industry is changing so much and for a moment there, I feel like I did find my place in the industry. And I think the older I get, I realize that I didn't know if I fit into it anymore, she told Kerr. It's a cultural thing. It's a culture thing uh, now, you know, where we have influencers that are just continuously telling you what you have to buy. And if you don't, you're not cool or whatever it is. Oh, hey, this is what beauty looks like. It kind of throws me back to how I felt when I was a kid. I felt like I've stepped away from it a lot, partially on purpose. And the other part of it, obviously, after having the baby, my kind of focus is just changing and simplifying a lot more. And I understand when you start having, you know, or raising a family, it's like, of course, your attention is going to change, um, you know, on what you're doing. But, you know, it's interesting to me that she calls herself an influencer because if you go to her, um, her Instagram, she very rarely posts, okay? And I know in her YouTube, which I don't even think she's really used in a long time, the last time I made a Cat Von D, here I'm on YouTube right here, we can uh, pull it up, let's see, her channel, she did like, I, I actually pulled it up for a thumbnail is why I had pulled up the video, and uh, the Cat Von D, 759 a uh, thousand subscribers that's a lot three months ago she did an, an, a song and then oh here it is the shoes that was four months ago ten months ago she says what she's this her dressing all the, the the rumors going on one year ago her wedding five years ago a song five years ago a song six years ago a song i mean it's not like she's an influencer what are influence in who like no, you were a star on a reality TV show that then started a makeup line. It's really what you were, okay? And that's fine. And in fact, some people I think would see that as more than something of being, you know, um, on Instagram or YouTube. That's kind of like the end game for some people. I know for Tana Mojo it was. So, you know, like you were, you already had it. You had, you know, the LA Lint Inc. and all that kind of stuff. I don't know. Maybe it is time for her to move on to her next thing. But why blame it on these influencers? Because you didn't never fit in to that. You never wanted to fit in. I mean, I always thought that was the thing about Kat Von D's makeup and everything anyway. And her look and everything. And the appeal was that 
It was for people that didn't feel like they fit in. And, I mean, that's really, I think, a lot of what Jeffree Star's appeal is to people. Yes, people love his makeup. They think he does makes fantastic makeup. But I think the allure of Jeffree Star as a person, as a persona, as an influencer, is that A, he supposedly knows good makeup, and B, he's like, hey, listen, I'm the Pied Piper of if you don't fit in. So wasn't Kat Von D kind of that too? So now she's blaming everybody because she didn't fit in? Girl, I don't know. Pull it together. It makes me kind of sad. It sounds like you don't really know yourself for 37. I think instead of planning a world tour with this album that you're putting out, I might take some time and get to know myself and figure out what I really want with the rest of my life, you know? I don't know. It kind of makes me sad, honestly. Anyway, I wish her the best. I know a lot of people can't stand her, so let me know what you think in the comment section below. Okay, the next thing I want to talk about is Mr. Nikocado Avocado uh, uh, Mango Fruit Tree Banana. Anna, how you doing? <laughs> oh, man. You know, Nick and I have always been friendly with each other. I have really no issues with him. But I feel like everything that he does now um, is really to hype up things for drama. Like, just because, like... It's not good enough just to do what you do, which is a mukbanger, okay? It's not good enough that you just, you eat on video to make money, which, hey, a lot of people love to watch those videos. It is what it is, okay? Um, I like watching some of them, too. I pick and choose who I watch very, very carefully. I don't need to know, no, I don't need to watch any sloppy eaters, okay? I just don't enjoy that. Um... And, I, and I, like, back in the day, the Trisha Paytas ones, I loved when she did them. I even, like, I, I mentioned the one about the breakfast that she did. She looked fantastic. But there were some, like, Domino's pizza ones that she would order, like, Domino's pizza at, like, 3 o'clock in the morning. They were hilarious. And it just felt like you were sitting there eating with her. I loved Eat With Chunky. Is she still around? I think she is. I think I looked her up not too long ago when I was doing some of these videos. So there's a whole community of this, okay? But, like, why is it that we can't just... Like, accept that where we're at, we're okay with. Like, why does it always have to be something more? Like, why are we, I mean, like, I, listen, I don't have any problem with people wanting to uh, dream, you know, achieve a goal and then dream a bigger dream. I'm a big believer in that, right? That when you accomplish one goal, you, you dream a bigger dream. I'm a big believer in that. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about concocting drama because you're not good enough with what's going on with your current situation and people really like you. And so what you're really doing is you're sabotaging your current situation. And that is exactly what Nick is doing. You know, a lot of people with this whole Stephanie Sue situation are coming out and they're saying people are being mean to, to Nick. People are, you know, saying really mean things to him. He's getting death threats. Okay, none of that is okay. None of that is appropriate. None of that is right. I don't think that he deserves any of that. I don't think anybody deserves any of that. I really, really don't, okay? I don't know what kind of society we live in today where people think that it's okay to send death threats to somebody. And I have received them before. And I'm like, bitch, Show up at my door, okay? And don't you think I won't call 911 so quick your head would spin? I'm telling you, okay? Like, seriously, why, why do we think it's okay to do that today? Like, I don't understand, right? Okay. But then it goes one step further. Like, if you're really wanting to, like, have people see you differently, or if you're really wanting, and I'm not saying, like, because he doesn't deserve that. I'm not saying that he brings it on himself. That's not what I'm saying, okay? Okay. That's for y'all to decide in my comment sections. What I'm saying is that there's a lot to be said for self-love. There's a lot to be said for going to counseling. There's a lot to be said for working on yourself and feeling better about yourself and taking responsibility for your actions, okay? There's something to be said for constantly baiting your fans. And I have a real issue with that, okay? I have a real issue with people that, like, when the drama stops, they want to keep it alive. They want to keep it alive. They want to keep it alive for views. And for, like, just baiting their audience into, like, just feeling like, it's like, okay, like, you've accepted the fact that you're kind of a train wreck. And now you're like, and if my fans can feed into me being a train wreck, then they'll stay and they'll stay and they'll stay. And it's this very parasitic kind of codependent relationship. That, that I think a lot of YouTubers demand of their audience and it's completely unfair to their audience, okay? I have met people in my life, true story, right? That literally focus so much on social media and YouTube that they have let their personal responsibilities go to the wayside and they're not even making any income off of it. They're not YouTubers. They're not social media influencers. These are your fans, okay? That you are literally dragging across the coals and I... I I, I get bitter about it, right? So I wanted to go check in and see what Nick Avocado was doing. And I noticed 
that he put up on 12320. Um, I'm doing a mukbang with my therapist next week. So excited. Okay. Um, there's somebody that uh, has been to therapy for many, many years. Okay. That to me is weird. I don't understand that. But you do your gig. Okay. You do your thing and you put that out there in the world and then guess wonder why people continue to judge you. I'm just saying. Okay. And then he goes on and he says some really negative things that I'm not going to say on here. And then he says that he, okay. So then apparently he made, um, I, I don't, I cannot, okay. I cannot even address this. The fact that I'm reading it on Twitter, um, it, it's just, just go to his Twitter. Okay. And when you scroll down, you'll be like, is he really like, what? Like, is he addressing this in a public forum? It's about a comment that he made, um, and it was taken the wrong way, supposedly, but the fact that he's, like, yelling and screaming about it on Twitter is just like, seriously, dude, enough, okay? And then he says, I have a new job, <laughs> okay? And people are like, what? And when you go underneath her, it's funny. Somebody says, let me guess, Nikocado Avocado 4, like another channel, and somebody said, best comment. Um, so what is your new job? We're interested in that. And then... He says, um, after that, how many stretch marks do you think I have? Go. Winner gets a shout out and a private picture of them. <laughs> Sweet Jesus, I need church. Okay. I, in my <laughs> deepest sanctuaries of hell, could care less to ever see a picture, not just of Nick Avocado Avocado stretch marks, but anybody stretch marks. Why would you want to see that? I don't understand, okay? And you want to come across as, I'm so normal. Look at me. I'm not crazy that everybody makes me out to be. I'm not some weirdo type that everybody wants to make me out to be. And then you're promising pictures of your stretch marks to people, okay? Nick, pull it in. This is not right. And then the last tweet, he says, I look like a effing fat rat, okay? Okay. When he has complained and complained and complained, and I understand body dysmorphia, trust me, I have it big time, okay? I understand looking down on yourself because of your weight and things like that. I've done it the majority of my life. I have worked so consciously in the last two years to really talk more body positively and to really accept myself as who I am and things like that. But he constantly is talking about how people are ripping him apart for his weight and body shaming him and whatever. You know, I, I, I don't know how I feel about the fact that you're accusing other people of body shaming you and you're body shaming yourself kind of almost welcoming it and if you go in the comment section what's sad about it is that it's just one co mean comment after another it's like i'm not you know like it, it, it's if you go underneath there it is one mean comment one mean comment after another so nick okay this is my question you either want to get better or you don't. And if you do want to get better to your audience, okay, for them, then do the things that you need to do that will help you get better, okay? I don't know. Maybe seek ther therapy from somebody that is an expert in dealing with this kind of stuff. All of it, okay? And maybe not put it on video for everybody to see. Maybe not have to, you know, like, I don't know, whatever. You know, take care of yourself. Really, you know, take some time to heal, okay, from all that's going on in your life. And then I think maybe have an accountability person or a manager, because you make a lot of money, that will tell you you're not putting this, you're not tweeting this stuff out because it's not doing you any favors. In fact, it's making people think about you negatively even more. And I don't understand why you would want that. I don't really understand why somebody, like this is one of the things that's very confusing to me about YouTube is we build up these channels and we build up these channels and we build up these channels, right? It's like I think Rylan Adams said it. We're all a bit narcissistic, right? That we want to be on YouTube. I mean, I have five channels, okay? Y'all think that I don't think I'm a little bit narcissistic? I mean, I know I am, right? Okay, so this is what I don't understand about it. So we build these channels so that people will like us and follow us and subscribe to us and continue to watch our videos. But then at some point you decide that you're going to tear that all down and you want people to hate you and you want people to talk negatively about you and tell you mean things to yourself. I don't want that. I don't understand why anybody would. So I don't know. The whole Nick Avocado thing, it kind of makes me sad at this point. It's so far out there. It's like whatever. And I hadn't really checked in on it in a while. So I thought, well, I guess I'll check in because every once in a while I get comments about it. So I don't know. What do you guys think about all of that? Let me know in the comment section. I love you guys, and I will see you tomorrow. Bye.